Greetings and salutations, friends and gamers of all stripes. My name is GM Dave. I am your man behind the screen, and welcome back to another installment of So You Want to Be a GM, where we will be continuing our ongoing series about campaign health and longevity by taking a look at something that you can do that will eventually help you to fill in some of the gaps and maybe even bring a little more spice into the primary game system that you use to run your campaigns. But before moving into the video proper, a couple of quick announcements. First and foremost, our hiatus is over. Yes, friends and gamers, those among you who are following my webcomic Phoenix Rising know what that means. The December hiatus that Hair Illustrations and I always go into for the comic is done. The newest episode is up. Chapter 3 for Phoenix Rising has begun. So open up that description box down below, follow the link to Webtoons, and give a read to it. It is the first of a three-parter. Go ahead, check it out. It has had a lot of love so far, and I'm confident that if you give the comic a read, you will enjoy it. Secondly, and I will be making a separate video about this probably later this week to explain in full why I've come to this decision, but I will no longer be backing up my videos to BitChute. To make a long story very, very short, I've simply had far too many problems over the past year and a half getting the uploader and mirroring for that site to work properly, so I've come to the decision that no longer will I be focusing on BitChute as my primary backup platform, now, going forward, my primary backup is going to be my Minds.com page, so expect to see me a bit more active over there. And with those announcements, finally good and done, let's get into the video proper. So, you've started your campaign, you've picked the system, you've run your first few sessions, you've had a few combats, a few roleplay encounters, a few puzzles, maybe even a couple of traps in there. And you found that there are just certain elements that your campaign is lacking. Certain things that you wanted to bring to the forefront. Certain inclusions you wanted to bring in there. Certain feelings you wanted to evoke through the mechanics, through the gameplay, that just aren't working with the system you're using. What can you do to fix this? Well, the obvious and immediate answer for the short term is going to be homebrew. You're going to need to come up with some rules and ideas of your own to fill in the gaps. But that doesn't always work out the best and sometimes we don't really know how to approach those things, particularly if you're relatively new to the hobby or haven't really done a whole lot outside of one or two primary systems that are very similar to each other. And let's be real here, a lot of the fantasy systems out there, particularly the big ones, Pathfinder and D&D, are very similar to each other in how they function in many, many, many ways. So what can we do then? What sources are available to us? What options do we have? Where can we look to to find solutions to fill in these gaps that we might be facing? For the sake of example, let's say you're trying to run a darker, more gritty fantasy-themed game using 5th edition D&D. You want to be able to show the difficulties and the rigors of the adventuring life, the dangers that monsters represent, and the way that can negatively impact a character's psychological state. But 5th edition doesn't really have good mechanics to do this. Sure, they've got the exhaustion mechanics, and that can tackle part of that problem, and yes, you will have the option to track your food and your water using rations and water skins and survival skills, things like that. There are elements in there that can help you do this, but there's just not enough. 5th edition as a system does not support a game like this very well. You would need to come up with a solution yourself. But what if you don't really know where to start with that? What if 5th edition is the only tabletop game you've played, as is very often the case nowadays? Where can you look to? Well, it's simple. Start looking to other tabletop systems. Branch out and try new games. Something you may occasionally hear said in this hobby about Dungeon Masters and Game Masters is that good Game Masters will create things for their games, but great Game Masters will steal things for their games. Well, what does this mean? How does this relate? To put it quite simply, what they are talking about is creating solutions to problems that come up mechanically in your games. Ways to counteract the issues of your systems that make it so that the main one you use, the main one you're comfortable with, the main one your group is comfortable with, doesn't necessarily work the best for the type of game you're trying to run. How do you fix that? Well, you could go out and experiment and try to create a solution for yourself, tailor-made for your group and your game. And that's great. Homebrew is a wonderful approach to take specifically because of how you can tailor it to work for your group. 
But home brewing from scratch is incredibly difficult. Not only is it very, very time consuming, but it can be a serious mental drain trying to figure out a solution to a problem when you don't really have a clear direction of how to approach it, which often ends up being the case for new GMs that really don't have a lot of experience with systems outside of the main ones they use. And when you then consider the fact that you are also the one who is setting up the campaign, scheduling the games, running everything for your players to interact with, I mean, having to homebrew solutions to fix the mechanical gaps in your game on top of that, from scratch, with no framework to work off of? I can't really think of a better example of a dungeon master or game master binding off more than they can chew. And that is why it is said that the really great dungeon masters and game masters out there are the ones who steal. And this is where the strength in trying a wide variety of systems lies. Not only are you going to have fun experimenting with new systems, learning new things, trying out new types of games, running one-shots and stuff, and generally bonding even more with your core group, although there is always going to be the challenge of convincing them to try something new, which is why I suggest one-shots here. But these experiences are going to broaden the scope of what is possible mechanically for a game in your mind. You're going to find simpler, easier solutions than you could probably come up with yourself because these new systems, these new games, these new campaigns and one-shots you're going to run and how you and your players interact with them will give you a clear idea of what works, what doesn't, and what elements you can steal and modify to fit in your main game. So moving back to our example of trying to run a darker, grittier 5th edition game, we already know that the system does not handle that very well. So let's say you start playing a few different games instead. You start running a couple of one-shots on off days with your friends, and you give a Savage World setting a try. Let's say you give Deadlands a try. Well, the Deadlands setting uses a rule that used to be universal in Savage Worlds, but was removed because there were quite a few settings that didn't end up making use of it, and that is the Grit rules. The way Grit works in Savage Worlds is your character has a secondary stat called Grit. It is something that is based off of their spirit, which is equivalent to willpower. And grit, generally speaking, represents how well a character responds to difficult situations, things that are frightening and horrifying, or just the general difficulties of the solitary adventuring life. Now, does this mean that grit is absolutely going to be the right solution for you? No, not necessarily. It's going to require a bit of experimentation. You're going to have to look at it and see how you can possibly implement it into your 5th edition game. But it is an option, and it's an option that you didn't have on the table before. It's an option that you can take from another game and use as a baseline foundation to build up something potentially that could work better for you in your main game. And more importantly, it's just one of a variety of options that are out there. A variety that you will more easily be able to experience if you experiment with playing and trying out more and more games. And the really beautiful thing about that, it leaves your time open to focus on your core campaign. You're not going to have to worry about homebrewing a system from the ground up. You can focus on what's important in the game itself. What you're presenting to your players in the game itself. And that is why that saying exists. That is why it is said that the truly great GMs are the ones that steal as opposed to making everything themselves. So get out there, newbie GMs, and start experimenting with other systems. Try out a few new ones to run as one-shots for your friends and see what sort of mechanics you might be able to borrow that will better enforce the type of feeling and the kind of immersion that you want to bring to your players for your games. And that's all I have for you today, friends and gamers of all stripes. If you liked the video, please feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and comment if you would like to see more and share your thoughts. And remember to open up that description box down below to check out Phoenix Rising and follow me on my social media platforms. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Minds is now going to be my primary platform for both social media and backup uploads, so make sure you're following me there. And with that all now said and done, friends and gamers of all stripes, once again, my name is GM Dave. I am your man behind the screen, and remember, in the world of tabletop games, you do not want to just sit back and watch. Get in there and game. Have a good one.